This time we'll try to take on a challenge. The challenge of attaining one of industry's most sought-after prizes. Oracle Certificate. Every journey starts with a calling, which we will try to find. Without a map and a compass, it's hard to find the path to your destination. I will show you my strategy in order to prepare thoroughly and elegantly. If you have prepared well, the battle will be a piece of cake. The more important part is the treasure and the wealth of knowledge you have gained and that you can share. Finally, I will show you a few sources of inspiration that might help you in making that first step towards attaining the certificate. If you find the content to be of value, then do not forget to click the subscribe button in order to get notified about any future content. Also, if you are interested in general software craftsmanship techniques and automated testing, then go ahead and check out my website. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting articles over there. Now, without any further ado, roll it! When you hear about the Oracle certification, you think to yourself, mastery, value, competence. Now, all of that is true, but I'm sure you also think to yourself, what is it there for me in the long run? Well, I have done six of those certifications uh, in the last eight years, I would say. And today I will tell you a bit about my story, my journey, basically. Uh, and I will tell it in a way which is told through the same way throughout the centuries, basically. So the most classic story of humankind, which is the hero's journey, which I hope you will, you will want to start uh, after you view this video. That's, 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 that's my aim, actually. Uh, because it is worth it, I can tell you. Just, just don't tell anyone. Okay, so the most classic story where you decide, the hero decides to go on an adventure, to find a dragon, uh, to do something challenging, basically. Now, the road to the dragon is long, it's not easy, you find a lot of enemies, you also find a lot of allies along the way. You'll learn a lot, you'll experience a lot of different things which you haven't experienced before. Uh, and then, if you actually finally get to the dragon, you fight it and hopefully you slay it, then what, right? Well, according to the story, you take the treasure, you take the elixir, that they say sometimes, in different variations of the story. Um, and I would say maybe a virgin, if you're lucky. Um, and then you go back to your community. Then you go back to your tribe, you share the treasure, uh, you share the elixir, you share the experiences, uh, all the stories, and everyone benefits, right? So that's the story. and. Is it actually true when it comes to the oral cert Oracle certification? Let's find out. Okay, so the first part, the first parts of 
any journey is of course the call to adventure now the call uh, may be of two kinds actually or both which is the best as, as uh, I will tell you in a moment so the first type of calling is an internal calling that you you decide at one point or there is uh, just a voice in the back of your head I guess you can say that way which is telling you that you should raise your level of knowledge you you should gain some more experience you should um, become a more profound software engineer java craftsman in, in in this case actually so there's a call from within uh, the other one is less valuable uh, but also important the one which calls comes from the outside actually so from an external source uh, you can think about the lord of the rings you know the the journey basically comes to the main character right it, it just comes to him from an external source and he has no choice so in my case it was 2012 uh, I was already two years in working professionally as a Java developer and I knew I, I had this feeling I had this internal feeling that uh, I wanted to raise my skill level to become better at, at Java craft um, as I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed it but I knew there's whole lot more to discover to learn a lot more skills and tricks basically so I had this internal thing in me and I wasn't quite sure how to proceed right um, and then uh, an external source came in the form of a, of a line manager uh, who came and just said you know because some of the guys didn't um, uh, attend uh, a coaching course during the year and back then and I think it's still this, this, the law now in Poland that uh, every year company has a certain amount of money they have to um, put aside on coaching on education for each of their employees so there was a bunch of us left uh, who didn't attend I didn't attend I don't know there were some uh, I think medical reasons I didn't I couldn't attend one of the coaching sessions which was um, dedicated for me and uh, most of the guys were Java so they decided you will do one of the examinations of one of the exams uh, and it just happened to be the Java 6 Oracle exam back then. I think Oracle just took over Sun uh, around that time. Uh, so it was Java Oracle already back then. So that call to the adventure, basically, uh, it came from within and with additional help from some external source uh, in the form of a line manager. Wow, what an external source. Well, anyway, that was that was how it began. Um, and I think uh, this is the most valuable, valuable way that you can start your journey, basically, because uh, if you don't have that internal calling, you will most likely, uh, not necessarily, but you will most likely do it um, just like line manager comes to you you didn't think about you know developing yourself uh, you know you just want to keep your programming life the way it is and tells you to prepare for an oracle exam in two months uh, you wouldn't be that happy I would say and you wouldn't like the process and you wouldn't gain really that much from from it so you, you wouldn't really gain that much and you wouldn't uh, most likely continue which is i think is the whole point uh like i said i i did six of those certifications uh in about eight years so after the first one i knew that it's 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 really worth it it's really worth it 
uh, and I went on. And I think that's the main point of, of, of doing that first certification is that you, it's, it's a series of um, decisions. Like every year you decide to do something to become better at your craft. And Oracle certification, Java certification is just an, one of the most obvious steps that, that you can take. So I hope all of you who are watching have that internal calling in you. Uh, and I hope this video will be that external source that will spur you up a bit uh, to take up the challenge and head on for your adventure. So, you decided, you decided, you're screwed. <laughs> now, everyone who decides to go on a journey, to, who decides to achieve something hard, uh, it's always better for that person to have some sort of a map, some sort of a strategy on his way to the dragon, basically. So. Uh, you can, of course, head on based on the stars, you know, that's and the wind, you know, that's fine. You can still get there, you can still get there, and most likely you will eventually, but it will just take longer than, than, uh, than, than necessary, I would say. So as to any goal, to any dragon, there are many strategies many maps to get to. What is the best one? I don't know. No, I really don't know. I have one. I have one map. I have one strategy which I used since, since I took the first exam, which is 2012. It, it never really changed that much. As far as I remember, it was the same 2012 and late 2018 when I took the update of Java 8 um, it was the same strategy so uh, it has so served me well I have never failed any of the exams I usually was between 80 and 90 percent mark sometimes more uh, sometimes less of course mm, but I never never um, never failed so Mm, I will show you. I will show you the scorecards, which are quite cool. They give you after after you finish the exam, which show the percentage and also show the areas which you have failed, which is quite cool and beneficial. So let's get straight into it. My map to Oracle Java certification. Okay, so there we are. You're wondering what are these little two groups of sheets? Well, these are the notes. Why there are two groups of them? And why one, two, three, four, five? I said six exams. Well, uh, my last notes from Java 8, they just, they just got lost during um, my last moving of house. So. Unfortunately, uh, I have only from the first five exams. Uh, but the map, the strategy, right? No tricks. It's there's. I won't tell anything that is of any surprise. So don't expect it. It's just plain hard work, um, and that's the only way. That's the only way to get to the dragon, so that you are ready for him. That you're really ready for him, and that you'll actually gain something from the whole experience. So the first part, uh, the way uh, I structured my strategy is was in three parts, actually in two, two or three parts depends how you how you look at it. So the first part, the first part, I always picked up 
the largest possible book for a certain certification. So let's say I was doing uh, Java Persistence API certification. I don't think it's available anymore. Um, but it was one of the most valuable ones, definitely. Um, maybe they still have it, I'm not sure. So I, I, I picked up the, the largest and most influential, let's say, book for that subject. And there was always two, three, four books for each of the certifications I took. And I'm sure there are for the current ones. So uh, I picked uh, that book. It took usually around a month to go through the entire thing and to create notes actually so i wasn't just reading uh, for like leisure reading on the couch no i was just i actually sat down in front of uh, on in my desk and i made notes on on most important crucial or eye-catching parts basically and i put them in each of those sheets uh, for later reference. So when I would continue uh, with the later parts of the strategy of the map, uh, I would have a reference. Basically, I wouldn't, uh, I didn't have to go back to that large book. I just had everything which is most important in, in the notes. So that's, that's, that was the first part of the strategy, which took around one month. And the entire thing, again, it's it, it's not a few weeks. It's 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 usually two to three months. It's usually two to three months to thoroughly prepare for that damn dragon. Really, it's it doesn't take two three weeks. Maybe if um, if you don't have any responsibilities, uh, you don't have a job. I don't know. Then maybe it's possible in three four weeks. But I'm sure all of you who are watching, you have tons of responsibilities. Uh, you're busy with your current lives. You are a student. You are working, right? So it, it takes a while. It takes a while. And, and do not shortcut. Do not take shortcuts, okay? Just take your time. It's really worth it. Otherwise, it is just kind of a waste of your time anyway. So... That's the first part of my strategy. The notes from a particular subject, uh, most influential book, basically. Okay, so you have your notes, you have the first part of your map ready. You have the notes from the book, which explains thoroughly the subject you're preparing for, for a particular exam. The next, what's next? You can see more notes. That's just the way it is. That's uh, the addition to the main ones. And the addition, I thought that I would create uh, notes which would consist of actual questions and how I assemble those questions. For each of the exams, I decided I will assemble... Well, I decided for the first exam and I just continued the strategy because it worked. I decided I would assemble 100 questions with just explanations, sometimes with answers, wrong answers, explanation why wrong, why right. And how I assembled those questions is I usually took 50 or 60 questions for each of those books that I prepared. And during the first month, uh, there was always a bunch of questions, tests, stuff like that. Sometimes f for the exam, sometimes just to test your knowledge. So. Uh, it was usually about 50, 60 of these. So I put them on in these notes and I filled another 50 questions from Stack Overflow. I did that since 2012 and Stack was already uh, large enough so that I could go find 50 most voted questions for a particular subject and, and I put questions and explanations in these notes. So I had the, the notes from the book and 100 questions with answers, wrong answers, explanations. 
uh, that's not all uh, during the time I was assembling these questions uh, I always uh, started to write some sort of an app which would use and take advantage of those ideas of course you, you cannot use all of them but at least the most important ones it's like you, you get you get an idea which ones are most important ones you know it's like the uh, you separate the wheat from the chaff basically and what's the most important ones because eventually the whole point of all this is that you will be able to use that knowledge um, that experience in your work that's the that's the whole point basically so uh, it's, notes are great but eventually you you will need to use those strategies and that's the whole point actually that's the whole point so uh this is the way i prepared that was uh my journey towards the dragon every time every time and um uh, you will see in the next in the next part how the battle actually looks and if you prepare thoroughly it, it's it's not that much of a hustle actually so okay so the time of the exam came so it's quite simple you go into the center you find the dragon you bash it in the head you get certification thank you <laughs> no it's 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 actually not that romantic uh, sometimes i wish it would be <laughs> like that but it's not that romantic uh, but let's actually get back one day before uh, the exam uh, so in general uh, when you sign for the exam you select the date and the actual hour of the exam which is quite important and always always pick an hour between 9 and 11 let's say max so that you will you will not need to wake up at 5 a.m right and not too late so that you'll be burdened with with the day whatever you'll be doing before the exam so it's like the only mm, you make sure uh, the only thing before the exam is just you wake up you go to the bathroom you eat i know f fruit you eat a yogurt you don't drink coffee okay do not drink coffee it will muffle your thinking do not do it the day before and uh few hours before the exam don't do it uh, so right so you get to the testing center uh, there's really nothing special about it uh, they just sit you in front of the computer you got 60 to 70 questions usually you got about two hours on average to finish it's always below two minutes for a questions as far as i remember it's which seems quite strict but if you have prepared well and you made uh, everything you had to uh, you learned everything uh, that was possible during your journey it will be more than enough it will be more than enough you will just fly f through those questions if you prepared thoroughly you know it's uh, the only exam which caused problems real for me uh, and i did use the full time available was the web services part and i think this is the one which caused was a bit of a pain for me but the rest i just used like 70 to 80 percent of the time and that was more than enough that was more than enough um right so you finished the exam and you got your results right wrong <laughs> you do not get the results uh until 30 to an hour 30 minutes or an hour later why is that i have no idea that's just the way it is so there is that an hour of wait that you are battling with your thoughts how did it go did i 
miss that question why did i select a not b you know it's 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 an hour of pain actually of real pain i don't know why they did it but man they are cruel that that hour is just just really horrible so uh, but you have to go through it on your way home it usually took took takes one two three hours to come back home you come back home and then you can check those scores and it's 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 the hardest pumping you know hardest pumping and but i never failed i never failed it's uh, only once like i said with the web services it's i had to use the whole time and i just barely s made it uh that was the only exam which was, was like on the line but but still i still i got it so really guys the battle is not that hard it's it's, it's really a piece of cake if if you prepare yourself the way you should prepare. Okay, so it has happened. The dragon is down, finally. <laughs> so we got a positive overall score. Now what? Well, obviously you get the certification. Well, actually you have to request it. <laughs> it's not like uh, they send it to you by default. You got, um, uh, they'll send you a mail uh, in which they say what you need to do in order to request a printed copy actually. So I don't know why they, they don't send you uh, the actual copy by default after paying around 200 250 dollars for for an exam i don't know but you can get it you just have to request it uh, so i remember in my first company there was a strong culture of raising your skills and in each of the rooms so let's say java developers had their own room uh, the analysts had their own room, you know, the infrastructure guys had their own room, and um, we basically battled, battled which room was more decorated with certifications, basically, and you might say it's a um, bit of a boasting about it, it's, it's, it's over the top, but I don't think so, it's, it's not easy to achieve, not even the Oracle certifications, but most of the uh it software engineering certificates that it's it's really not easy and it, it's it's a really valuable and worthy achievement so if you get any of these just hang them proudly on your wall in your home in your office at work whatever but but do it do it it's it's you should you really should okay so what you get also uh, are the actual score reports so i promise i'll show you some of these uh, actually you have access to them all the time you can print them out whenever you like i still managed to print the one from 2012 so they keep the entire record all the time so don't worry about getting it and showing it to I know your future employer whoever is concerned so or for your own records right so the first one 2012 uh java standard edition 6 programmer certified professional so uh they show you the score right what was the passing score when it was really low 61 percent. it was quite easy uh, i remember i my gut feeling as it was my first exam i thought I, I just failed it maybe i got like 50 percent i was totally flabbergasted when i, I saw that 85 percent you know and again it's it's really cool thing that they show also which areas uh, they, of course they cannot show <laughs> the the answer that the exact answer which you failed on because it just can't because they're all the answers would be on the on the um, uh, available to anyone quite soon so they just tell you the area of 
a particular subject that you missed so it's really weird as i go through this it's like i failed in every part <laughs> but i got 85 percent i guess i just failed one question each for most of the areas over here of course i failed a lot on the input output that's that's a standard i guess threads and input output okay so the next one web component developer 85 percent of 64 this was a bit the bar was a bit higher but still low enough low enough so um uh, really bad on security model i see i failed well yeah next one is persistence that was the coolest one it's 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 like uh this is the one i think i used the knowledge from this one i used most in my in my career basically and i helped people understand um the way the persistence work and all and object relational mapping works in in java basically it was really really good one it was 91 percent on this one and the next the uh, the worst one the nemesis the web services one 70 percent needed 65 just barely barely made it uh failed in every aspect of web services basically but but still gain a lot of knowledge uh, i mean the soap web services are not that prominent anymore they used to be they're not right now they're still used in some government based apps and maybe inter intercompany um apps basically so but it's mostly rest it's mostly rest right now so but still very valuable knowledge whatsoever uh, next one enterprise java bean so no one uses this ejbs right so everyone just uses spring right now but still i wanted to take this exam because the ideas are quite similar because this is the core not the core of the dependency injection context and idea basically so transactions you know the, the the session objects the application scoped object request scoped objects it's it's um uh it was really really interesting and really valuable still valuable 91 percent on this one next one okay so we got five i told you i did six actually i did seven okay because i forgot about the oracle database sql one which i attempted for fun i just wanted i just wanted to try something else than java and as a java developer we all know that we deal with sql all the time anyway so um i just wanted to uh, fill in all the gaps i had on sql the transactions so specifically it was the oracle database which is the most widely used basically so was really really interesting and worthy attempt and the last one 2018 um was an upgrade actually so it wasn't the actual exam of an entire um subject but it was only an update from java 6 to java 8 so only the differences basically and um this is the only exam which took me i think five six weeks instead of or ten or more to prepare uh and it was uh, looking at it now 78 percent probably i could have spent two or three more weeks extra but i just i was just hasty i just wanted to do it before some holidays and um i knew if i go on holidays and i come back i'll just forget like 50 60 percent i will i will not be at the a game um after coming from holiday so that's why uh, i did prepare a bit less than for the others but still got 78 percent for 63 needed so um, so as i look at it 
probably did mistakes on any of most of the parts um most of the objectives but it was also like one maybe two false ones okay so these are the reports um what's next what's next so what do you gain uh besides the certificates and the reports uh, besides the papers so since ever since i got my second i think as far as i remember certification the recruiters were pointing that they spotted me and they uh, filtered me out um for interview because they saw those certificates being there and it was like 80 percent of the time since then uh, i always ask what was the uh, crucial thing in my cv and 80 percent of the time uh, among in the list that the, they pointed to was always those certifications so um it, it's always there with you those uh, you can always put them in a cv and they will always be very very valuable and they will catch the eye of every um recruiter that's that's you can be sure about it you can be sure about it and also besides uh, uh these kinds of benefits uh, you're just you're just a wealth of knowledge you know for your team uh you understand uh the areas uh which you got uh, certified uh really really deeply and comprehensively uh and you can you can share this knowledge with your team you know if someone is struggling with something you can explain to them why is this exactly happening and you'll be able to do it like that right because you, you've 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 done your journey you know you slay the dragon you know how to do it you know so you got the experience you've got you've got the elixir basically so uh your it will be a very valuable addition to your team basically and another thing is is like your story uh when you tell your friends uh, when you tell your colleague uh java developers um I had at least one person in each of the jobs I was working uh, that based on the story I have told them about those certifications, they decided to uh, start their, their own journey and all of them decided to do more than one examination, do, do, do more than one exam and um, it, it's like they got hooked really after after getting the first one they wanted to get the next one the next one the next one it's, it's really um contagious you might say you know the the feeling that that you that you achieve it actually so uh it's it's, it's good for you it's it's good for your future and it's good for your community and it's good for the people you're around basically because um it's it's uh, you uh, you have achieved something which is not easy which is rare i would say no more than 10 percent of java developers have at least um one um, uh, of those certifications i think 90 percent don't have any basically they don't care or they haven't stumbled upon anyone uh, that uh, has spurred them up to do it basically so you would be that person once once you once you go through the through the process so like i said in every journey that is hard that is long uh, that is demanding there are always benefits to you and your community Okay, so the final parts of the video, actually a bonus part. 
uh, where I would like to share with you some of the books that would help you uh, in deciding to start your journey with Oracle certifications or any um, endeavor in order to raise your skills and during that process also because it's not easy it's not an easy path so first off you got two books which are not like imagined stories um, so the first one is the mastery by uh, Robert Greene uh, so he tells um, a couple of great stories about people who decided to become masters in their craft whatever it is uh, it doesn't really matter uh, in terms of um, well the whole point was that after 10,000 hours of educating yourself upon a certain subject it's just your unconscious kicks in and produces ideas uh, out of itself that you wouldn't even thought about before. It's, it's a really crazy um, transformation that happens in your brain. And I think it's true. I've been working in software engineering for 10 years professionally and like in general coding for like 15. And I think there is there is a lot of truth in it. So. Robert Green and Mastery. Next one is just a straight, straight up call to action. Get up off your couch, do something, be disciplined. Um, so Jerko Willink, discipline equals freedom. He'll just tell you like a um, drill sergeant, basically. Just do it. Don't think, just do it. You will figure things out along the way if you will be disciplined along the way very important okay so now the stories so the first most likely i think the first hero's journey story the odyssey uh try to read both the iliad and the odyssey uh, they both complement each other and you'll just realize that that hero's journey story was with us forever Next one, we got, oh, there's actually no, it's Paulo Coelho, The Alchemist. Really short read, uh, really enjoyable uh, book about a boy that decides, he's a shepherd, a uh, simple shepherd, he he's, has a dream about pyramids and he decides to find out what's actually there and uh, he has a lot of problems along the way. Um, he has a lot of times when he dis he is able to settle down at certain points during his journey, but something just pushes him to to find those pyramids, find that dragon. You know what what's what will actually happen once once you get there. You know so, and actually more valuable things happen to him um, than if if he would decide to to quit his journey along the way. It's really, really great read. And finally, of course, the Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit by Tolkien. You all seen the films. If you haven't read the books, do it. This is an amazing, amazing sort source of motivation and the um, embodiment of the hero's journey, basically. So. So, wrapping up, decide that you want to head on for the journey, that you want to do the certifications. Be disciplined along the way. Uh, be patient. Be thorough. Uh, get inspired by the right sources. Uh, and just, man, slay that, slay that dragon. Get the elixir, get the treasure. Come back share with everyone, everyone will benefit.